Good morning. I'm Brad Duncan with the Office for Graduate Academic Affairs at the University of Dayton. Uh, today, with this short video, I, I hope to help you get started uh, creating and using digital signatures for some of the, the new forms that we've been creating. I'm using Adobe Acrobat Reader DC. That's the free version of the Adobe Acrobat Reader. It's the most current version as of April 2021. If that changes over time, my instructions might need to be modified. All right, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. And let's look at this particular form. Um, Let's pretend that you have received a form um, that requires your digital signature. Linda Wallace created this form for me earlier today. Uh, we're using one of our shorter forms. It's the program time limit extension form, but the steps I'm gonna show you apply to any of our forms. She's got this pesky student, Brad Duncan, who's enrolled in the MS in Fractal Art Design Program. And he's been dragging his feet for a long, long time and needs to extend his program. Linda has uh, gotten promoted today to associate dean. And now it's come back to me, the pesky student, who needs to apply his own digital signature down here in this block. You'll notice that a digital signature is required in a, a, a PDF form when you see these little red arrows pointing off to the right. Um, in, on, on my computer screen, they sort of look reddish orange. You might see a slightly different color, it doesn't matter. Uh, the digital signature block is indicated by that little right pointing arrow. All right, so let's just click in one of these blocks where uh, my signature is required. And I, I have cleared all of my uh, prior digital signatures and I'm gonna create a new one and show you how to do it. It just takes a few steps. So we're gonna assume that you haven't yet created a, a digital signature for yourself. You click in the box where your signature is required and then click on configure digital ID. All right, click on create new digital ID, then continue. Click on save to file and then continue. And then you put in your information. So give me a second. And my organization is Graduate Academic Affairs. And we work at the University of Dayton. And my email address All right. And I'm going to use this for digital signatures put in all the information, check your spelling, and click continue. All right, now what you need to do is create a password. Your digital ID is gonna be password protected. So give me just a second. After you put one in, you have to verify it. Okay, and then hit save. All right, it's possible to create multiple dig digital signatures for multiple purposes. You might have one for professional use at work. You might have one to sign on behalf of some uh, civic organization. You might have one that you create for signing private personal documents at home. Um, in this case, I've only created the one digital signature, but if, you, if you've created multiple, It'll, uh, uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader will offer you all of them that you've created. You pick the one that you want. Uh, I'm just gonna pick the only one that I've created so far and click continue. That's what your digital signature will look like when it's uh, inserted into the uh, signature block in just a few seconds. If you would like to include a, a, a scanned image of your actual signature, you can do that. I'm not going to go through how to uh, how to do that today. Uh, YouTube is your friend. Um, search for um, procedures on uh, any of your favorite search engines. Um, okay, so I'm going to apply my digital signature. 
I have to once again type in my uh, password. And click sign. The next thing I will be prompted to do is um, save the document. Before your signature will be added, you have to save the document. It'll save it and apply your signature simultaneously. I suggest if a unique name for the document you're signing has not already been uh, created, that uh, you give your document a, a unique name. In this case, I'm using my initials and today's date. Uh, Linda uh, previously created that for me when she sent this form to me. So I don't want to say I, I want to save it in the, the, the current document, and not override an older document. I'm just going to click save. It'll ask me if I want to replace it. Yes, because I'm adding another signature to a document that needs multiple signatures. Just click on yes. And you'll see that my digital signature has now been applied. OK. Uh, You'll notice also that the uh, digital signature includes the date as well as a timestamp. If you sign this digitally the proper way, you don't need to include any information in this date block. You can include it if you'd like, but your digital signature includes the date and timestamp. So it's, it's kind of redundant. You'll also notice if you can see it that there's an Adobe watermark here to indicate in, in part that this is an authentic uh, signature. And if I hover over it, Hopefully you can see the little box that says that this is a valid signature. I believe if we hover over Linda's, um, it doesn't say that this is valid on her, but I, there's another process by which I can uh, check the authentic, uh, authenticity of her signature by checking certificates. But anyway, this document is now digitally signed. Uh, and saved away, what you would do now is email it to the next person who needs to sign. You can send it to students or colleagues who are um, working remotely, out of state, or even overseas. Uh, I also would point out that digital signatures are actually more secure than ink on page. Every ballpoint pen on campus can be used to forge your signature, um, but for a digital signature, uh, only you know the password and the signature file exists only on your computer. Uh, so it's much more secure. Now I'm not gonna pretend that this would stand legal muster for truly sensitive documents, but for our purposes, for the purposes of the forms in our office, this is actually better than ink on page. It's much more secure. Okay, so what about our GA contract form? Let's take a look at that. Our GA contract form exists as an Excel file. And as such, it's not digitally signable yet. So if you are the originator of a GA contract, you would fill it out in the ordinary way. You'd fill out the student's information, the position information, funding information, and all of that. And there's, there's nothing for you to do right now. You can't sign, you can't digitally sign this document as an Excel file. What you need to do is first save it as a PDF. You go up to file, click on save as, pick the folder you want it to go to, click on the save as type box, save it as a PDF, and then give it a unique name for the student that you're filling this out for and maybe give it a date. Okay, save it away. And then when you saved it away, you've saved it as a PDF document, open that PDF document in your Adobe Reader software. So I, I haven't filled this out, but what I would like to do is I'd like to apply a digital signature down here in the signature fields. It's very simple to do. All I do is I come over to this right-hand side. Let me move my picture just a minute. This, this right-hand column is known as the tools column. Scroll down until you find where it says more tools and click on that. 
Then click on certificates. At the top of the document now, you will see some options now that you've clicked on the certificate tool. Click on digitally sign. And this pop-up window will, will show up. It says, using your mouse, click and drag to draw the area where you would like the signature, of, signature to appear. Once you finish dragging out the desired area, you will, you will be taken to the next step in the signing process. Um, I'm assuming that you have already created a digital signature, as I showed you before, for the next steps. Uh, once you've done this a few times, you can click the do not show this message again box and then just move on. For now, I'm going to click OK. And I want to sign it down here for me. And I just drag out a box. And since I've already created a digital signature for myself, and I've only got the one, I, I click that radio button. If you had multiple ones, you would click on the one you want to use. Click Continue. Then put in your password. Click sign. Again, it's going to ask you to save it. It will apply your digital signature and save it simultaneously. Uh, since I am signing a document that was already created with a unique name, I'm going to overwrite that just by clicking save. You want to replace it, say yes. I've now applied my digital signature and it's already saved. You would then email this to the next person who needs to sign. Of course, I'm signing at the, I'm the last signer for these documents. I'm at the bottom of the box. Uh, you would have to send it, the originator would first send it to the student, then to the supervisor, department chair, program director, uh, and then eventually back up to me. That's how you do it. And by the way, what I showed you here for the GA contract is the same way you would apply a signature, a digital signature to, to any PDF document that does not already have a, a previously created digital signature block. Our program time limit extension form that I showed you earlier had a previously uh, established digital signature block. Just click in that and move on. For any PDF document that you need to sign that is not set up a priori to take digital signatures, use the Include Certificate tool. All right. That's all for now. I hope that will help you uh, get started uh, creating and using digital signatures. Um, if you have any trouble installing the Adobe Acrobat Reader software, please contact UDIT. And if you have questions about our forms or uh, have any suggestions on how to improve this little tutorial, please contact me directly and I'll do what I can. All right. Thanks a bunch. See you soon.